means Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most important, Allah is the best. So this signifies the, the beginning of the prayer. That everything now... Can I, can now, I pause with a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, what is the purpose of placing the hands behind the ears? I'm going to guess that's in the hadith somewhere, um, or is it not? Well, the way that we pray, we actually try to emulate Prophet Muhammad. Sure. So every movement that he did... We believe that he was the best one to know how to worship the Creator. So we try to emulate everything. Here. But there is no significance in, you know, you see some people, they touch the ears. Some people, they bring them up here to their shoulders. Just the raising of the hands. That's in like saying there's Allah. there's no Akbar. real significance of... No, that's not like the key okay. that, you know, boom, now you're I've in prayer. I've seen it a lot. That's like like that. I had never seen or read or heard well, a, you'll a, find a that, description. Yeah, you'll find that in the traditions of the Prophet, which are called hadith. Right, where you raise your hands to about your ears height or shoulders height to signify you're entering your prayer. Allah Akbar, you say Allah is the greatest. So this should signify to anybody who's entering the prayer that everything else now is insignificant and unimportant now. Now you're just focusing on your prayer. You just said Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Allah is the best. Allah is the most important. Nothing else is important now. Your phone is off. Every, now you're completely engaged in the prayer. So you can't talk in the prayer. You can't eat in the prayer. You can't laugh in the prayer. You can't do anything which may make you impure, such as passing gas, such as anything coming out of the front side genitals like urine or anything like that. All of that will invalidate your prayer. If somebody talks to you, you can't respond. Okay, so you're completely engaged. Now is your time to communicate with the Creator. Now is your time to communicate with prayer. So then we recite, in the beginning we recite a supplication, or actually a fatiha, how it's called, the first chapter in the Quran, the opening, where it says all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the universe, the Lord of all creation, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, the owner of the day of judgment. You do we seek aid, you do we seek assistance from, guide us to the straight path, the straight path, the path of that whom the, the path of those whom you have bestowed your guidance upon, not the path of those who have gone astray or who have earned your anger. And then we say, Amin. Then we read another part of the Quran. Another part. So it's obligatory upon every Muslim to memorize verbatim some of the Quran so that they can be able to pray. So that they can be able to pray. But somebody who enters Islam and you know and they're new to Islam, then um, they can learn some different supplications until they can learn. Arabic and, uh, and learn how to recite the Quran. So then uh, we'll go into the bowing position. Okay, and then so throughout the whole prayer, we're actually supplicating. We're making supplication. We're making uh, invoking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive us, to have mercy upon us, praising Him. So that is what we're actually doing through the different movements. So the movements and every movement has a different supplication that we make in the prayer. Okay, the prostration, we believe that the prostration is when you are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That your supplication is always answered. Jesus prostrated, right? So, when we compare, like, because I was, I was born a Catholic. And I did a lot of research, a lot of studying and things like this. Comparative studies between the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, Quran, and things like this. And I came to the conclusion, I said, well... It only makes sense that Jesus was a Muslim, just like all the other prophets who came before him. And Paracletes was Prophet Muhammad. The Comforter was Prophet Muhammad. Um, that it talks about in the New Testament. Uh, the Mount Quran, you're familiar with Mount Quran? You guys study the Bible, right? 
Mount Quran. Go home. That's a homework assignment. Right? <laughs> Find out where is Mount Quran. What do the Bible commentators say about where is Mount Quran? Okay? Because it mentions that verse in the Bible, Mount Quran, that there will be a fiery word and he will come with, I think, 10,000 saints and things like this. So many of the biblical scholars say that Mount Quran was in Mecca. So, um, Jesus prostrated. So, prostration is, and you know, this is something that I didn't understand too. But I have a friend, he's an evangelical Christian, he's a uh, pastor. So, we go to Denny's and we eat breakfast sometimes and things like this. So, we get into it, you know, we're friends, but we get Absolutely. into discussions, you know. And I asked him, I said, well, you know, the way we pray, we pray trying to emulate Muhammad and everything that he did, every movement he did and things like this, because we believe, well, he's a prophet of God and he would know best how to worship the Creator. So I said, how, like Christians, this people, they worship differently. They go to some churches, they get on their knees, they stand up, they get on their knees, other people dancing and singing. Everybody has a different way of praying. So I said, why don't like you guys pray the way Jesus prayed? And he answered me, he's like, well, we don't interpret uh, the way that Jesus prayed to be, you know, uh, uh, we intended to be more spiritual, you know, spiritual or analogical, where you can interpret it the way you want to pray, right? Pray is, you know, supplicating and things like that. Because we have the same thing. We have supplication where you can invoke God anytime. If you make a sin and you need to 